come to legally speaking with me, Tarun Nangia. Promoters, investors, general counsels are worried. Why are they worried? Because the pendency in the National Company Law Tribunal and the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal has gone through the roof. And we increasingly see that this process of, uh, in a sense, handing over companies to eligible applicants in that sense via the NCLT process has become an unending process. It tires out parties on both the sides and investors are very uncertain. And that is why we are doing this show today and how to improve the present situation, which is what we're going to discuss on the show. I've got a very eminent panel. May I welcome at the outset, uh, Justice Arjun Kumar Sikri, sir, has served as the judge of the Supreme Court of India. Currently, he's judge of the Singapore International Commercial Court. Good to see you, sir. Uh, may I welcome Justice M.M. Kumar, who, as we all know, has served as the founder chairman of the National Company Law Tribunal. Uh, good to see you and hoping for some very interesting uh, interventions from your end on this topic. Mm, I have uh, with me senior advocate, Parat Tripathi. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Tripathi needs no introduction. He is one of India's top commercial councils and a very fine mind. Uh, you may see him on any of these forums day in and day out in the Supreme Court, in the High Court, and in the NCLT and the NCLT. Uh, Mr. Tripathi, good to see you again and looking forward to some very interesting interventions from you. I have with me Mr. Mahesh Agarwal, uh, who is managing partner of one of India's top litigation law firms, uh, the undisputed top in what we call our Apex Court, which is the Supreme Court of India and uh, the tribunals. Good to see you again, Mr. Mahesh Agarwal, and looking forward to some interesting points, especially from the client set. You represent some of the who's who of corporate India and would be nice if you could get their, uh, uh, in a sense, worries to us. Uh, may I request Mr. Mahesh Agarwal in about next two and a half, three minutes, if you could lay the ground about what are the concerns of the business community before we move ahead. See, the concerns basically are, as you tightly put it, delay. What happens is that the resolution process starts, invitations are uh, sent out, expressions of interest are invited, and then it's an unending process. A successful resolution applicant has to keep apart the funds which it has committed. After keeping apart the funds, it doesn't know that as to when the company will be acquired. And even after it is acquired, what is the appeal process? How long it will take? For example, I'll give you, everybody knows that in 2017, there was a list of dirty dozen. I mean, I don't want to call that word dirty dozen, but there were 12 big companies. One or two cases are still pending after five years. People have made investment, but cases are not over. There are certain legal issues which are involved. Most of them today stand settled. But still the uncertainties are there and new issues are arising until and unless we are able to meet with the legislative expectation of closing everything in one year. It is very difficult to invite new people, new investment. Just now we are only discouraging investors. As a result of which, what you are seeing now, we are seeing huge haircuts of 90%, 80%, 95%. Why is that happening? Because many eligible investors are shying away. They don't want to come and get embroiled in a legal process and face litigation for the next four years. The whole objective was to get a company on a clean slate, but that's not happening. So we have to find some solutions. The point of haircut that you made is also very worrying with 95% haircuts. I don't know if that can even be called a haircut. It's almost getting your head clean shaven. Uh, I'll go to uh, senior advocate Parag Tripathi at this point. Uh, Mr. Tripathi, you get to represent uh, all these top clients in the, uh, even when as NCLT matters escalate to the Supreme Court. Uh, uh, if you can, uh, in a sense, give your opening comments on this issue. Yeah. You see, Tarun, there are two or three broad facets of this problem, which is, as Mahesh rightly said, a serious problem. One is what I call the legacy issues. That is, NCLT inherited a huge amount of festering and pending disputes. Festering meaning they may not have reached, but they were ripe otherwise, and pending meaning they were pending elsewhere. Secondly, there is the problem, the, the usual problem we have of finality. 
as i had said earlier in this program there is a respected view in jurisprudence that when a party exhausts the first remedy that is of the original suit or the original petition that is where the private interest comes to an end and thereafter appellate jurisdiction should only be exercised for public interest now this of course cuts both ways because what happens if you have an unsustainable judgment at the first level the answer is that even at the last level there are several judgments which some people believe are unsustainable so there is no end to it it's it's a mindset change which is needed there has to be an element of finality with the costs which it results in because not to give finality has its own problem so you can consider dropping the statutory appeal to the supreme court 136 that is slp will still be there but people will realize that nclt and clat and the buck stops here quite literally the third is the appointment and infrastructure issues you have to appoint people who are commercially domain experts who have dealt with the field that's very important we have had some sterling appointments in the past one of the appointments is we are lucky to have uh, justice kumar with us so it makes a lot of difference if you have domain experts who come and chair uh, these institutions with it i think there is a huge problem of infrastructure in nclt delhi uh, the infrastructure is just not enough and it puts a huge pressure on the judges and also on the lawyers and i think here the 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 benefit which we have had of video uh, uh, presentations and video appearances should be institutionalized because nclt and nclat is one area where it will have maximum benefit the problem is the uh, difficulty which comes in hybrid appearances the person who is physically there can hear the person who is on the video but not vice versa i don't think this is a glitch of a nature which requires rocket science to clear any good it professional should over the next 1 2 3 months be able to handle it and this will make the entire change possible because so many times i find in nclt and even in clat the paper books are not there in video the the documents can't be seen and the court is forced to adjourn but most of all i think we have to have a change of mindset uh, as amartya sen had said uh, india is a country of fairly litigious people and we have to learn that after the first round it is over this business of uh, as i have said before this business of uh, best chasing the good is a disaster you get an order whatever it is you have to live with it and that i think is a mind change which we require because we lawyers are most guilty here we go and persuade the appellate court judges that great specific great injustice has happened here and we naturally try to build on that point so i think we have to learn to accept that first level adjudication and that's how it is for instance we have done that in arbitration we have now accepted that after an award more or less it is over particularly in a a uh, high court like delhi which is my parent high court where a 34 is an extremely uphill task and rightly so that doesn't mean that all awards are right it just means they are fine thank you for that opening uh, comment i'll go to justice arjun kumar sikri who as we all know is one of india's top arbitrators uh, you and that is why i want to ask this question to you that even while uh, top arbitrations are going on for hundreds and thousands of crores in which many of you are involved we see banks going ahead and finally uh, filing applications in the nclt uh, before even the arbitral award is out or while the arbitral award is challenged in the high court or the supreme court uh, where is the problem uh, according to you uh thank you tarun uh, and it's a very pertinent question and what i have observed uh in many arbitral proceedings uh where uh the and particularly in the construction companies uh i, I know mr parakh tripathi is representing nhai in uh, many cases what happens is that where concessioner there are some disputes which arise between the concessioner and nhai and uh, it leads to termination of the contract i'm not saying nhai may be in a particular case right in terminating or it may be wrong in terminating that is for the arbitral tribunal to decide at the end but what happens is that in such a project uh, uh, normally uh, hundreds of crores or sometimes even more than 1000 crores are invested in that particular project uh, 
and uh, the uh, concession period is there. There are different uh, systems, but normally, if you go uh, uh, where the uh, concessionaire has spent the amount, and uh, uh, it is now given uh, a right to collect the toll, etc., which period maybe 15 years, 20 years, and uh, but in between, some disputes arise because of some uh, alleged uh, faults or faults on the part of the concessionaire or NHAI, etc., and it leads to termination. What happens? At that stage, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of money which is owed to the banks because in all such cases, there's always a tripartite agreement because they know it. Uh, if the, this kind of money is to be invested by the investor or concessionaire, they can't spend it from their pocket. They have to ultimately borrow it from the bank. So ultimately, in these, uh, the escrow account is opened with the bank, a tripartite agreement between the concessionaire, the employer, say NHEI, for example, and the banks, That uh, and waterfall mechanism is there, that the money which is collected uh, from toll, how it would be spent. So, in, uh, uh, in uh, what would be the priority which would be given, and uh, and only if surplus is left out of that, which uh, uh, goes to the concessionaire. But what happens is the coming to the question in such a scenario, uh, when uh, uh, because of certain reasons, uh, the the uh, uh, income or the toll collection is less then what is minimum required even to service the debt or for maintain because maintenance also during this period remains the responsibility of the concessionaire maintaining of these roads uh, highways etc which uh, on which uh, hundreds of crores are uh, to be spent uh, in a couple of years or so so but then uh, when, when, when that uh, source of collecting the toll uh, becomes dry the banks would naturally, the, the uh, amount which is outstanding is 700, 800 crores rupees or whatever, they won't sit quite. They would go against that concessionaire, and which are normally the um, uh, special uh, purpose vehicles that companies constituted and file uh, under IBC, file, uh, 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 I mean, for CIRP or for uh, uh, insolvency, bankruptcy, etc., those proceedings would be filed. On the one hand, that is there. And on the other hand, there's an arbitration going on where the uh, concessionaire has filed claims against the employer and is saying that, no, look, I will be able to salvage my position if ultimately I am awarded this particular money or some part of money if it is. But then, uh, I mean, the, the arbitration cannot be decided immediately. And on the other hand, there are NCLT proceedings also. So, uh, in many cases, what happens if NCLT proceedings uh, uh, under IBC as well, there is a, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, provision as uh, is discussed by Mr. Mahesh Agrawal as well as uh, Mr. Parak Tripathi that timelines are set under IBC, so they have to decide, and delay should not be there, which is perfectly valid. But in a scenario like this, on the one hand. Suppose the award is given in a particular case in favor of uh, the that concessionaire, maybe after two years or after one and a half years or so, but in the meantime, it goes bankrupt. Or it is taken away and a CIRP, somebody else has come and taken away. So therefore, how to synergize the proceedings before the arbitration and uh, IBC? This becomes another a very uh, interesting uh, thing and... Uh, and uh, but the two authorities are different arbitration on the one hand and uh, IBC on the other hand, and one cannot control the other. And even if the award comes, initially it will be challenged under Section 34. Maybe, as Parag is rightly mentioning, that the uh, uh, challenge may not succeed. It doesn't succeed in many, of case, many cases. But then under Section 34 also, it would take some time. It may take one year, it may take two years, it may take even more than that to uh, ensure, I mean, to see whether the award is to be upheld or not. So this is conundrum is there, and how to resolve this becomes a very, very big issue. I would, uh, at, at this stage, only add one more, because this was uh, my reply to your specific uh, question, which you had put. But uh, I would only want to uh, add or uh, make uh, some remarks to what uh, uh, Parag has said. Uh, of course, the issues which he has uh, mentioned, uh, Mahesh has uh, stated about delay, which was echoed by Parag, and he, Parag, rightly added to that the issues of legacy and finality and appointment infrastructure, etc. These issues are there, uh, as now I'm coming to IBC specifically. And we have the 
uh, and problems of uh, uh, this uh, 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 finishing the case within the timelines which are provided under the act yes there are uh, many cases as we proceed further we'll come to know that how many percentage of cases which are not uh, mean which have breached these timelines and have not been able to end at appellate stage etc but having said so uh, and they uh, and therefore we not only need a uh, number of uh, judges or members judicial and administrative members or technical members and but uh, uh, as uh, parag rightly pointed out we need persons who really Uh, have uh, the knowledge expert uh, expertise in the subject and journalists would not uh, serve the purpose but and those who are appointed there has to be a capacity building yes and we have to ensure that yeah they are able to do and, and what should be done in that in the form of training etc but only one uh, caveat i would add to what uh, parag has said is this that of course there should not be many appeals etc and uh, his suggestion is welcome that uh, appeal to supreme court can be abolished it can be 136 only but one appeal is must because this is judicial process in contra we can't here have, have the example of arbitration because arbitral tribunal is constituted it is the, the uh, i mean the, the, the philosophy is totally different it is the party autonomy the two parties Uh, who are litigating with each other had chosen that forum but that doesn't and therefore the uh, uh, when under section 34 the courts are not sitting in appeal that is what the law is but this is not so when we, it comes to from nclt to nclat and uh, that is appeal so the jurisdiction is totally different and if the if there is some uh, mistake committed by nclt in uh, uh, first appeal nclat has right to correct that mistake so the the uh, scope of uh, 34 and nclat appeal is totally different and it has always been recognized from very beginning from 1950 onwards supreme court has said that at least one appeal statutory appeal should be provided in case wherever there are judicial uh, authorities or quasi judicial authority deciding in Thank you. Thank you for that opening comment. I will go to Justice M M Kumar. Now, sir, you have served as the founder chairman of the NCLT. Some big, great resolutions happened during your tenure. Uh, markedly, uh, we could speak about the Bhushan Steel uh, resolution, which was much talked about. There were some other big cases. Uh, why suddenly this piling up and NCLT starting to look like any other court with lots of pendency? Two, three factor which has uh, contributed to the pendency. one is non appointment of president of the nclt and the chairperson of the nclt january 2020 i demitted office and march 2020 justice mukhopadhyay demitted office of the appellate tribunal thereafter it took one and half year to appoint a regular president and chairperson in the interim the ad hocism which prevailed mr there were so many ad hoc president who were i mean ad hoc president were appointed even for two days one day So that resulted in, I think, uh, lose losing control over the administrative work as well as the judicial work. Infrastructure, of course, is another aspect. I think Prague has rightly pointed out. that the because of infrastructure uh, deficit there is a possibility of uh, moving towards the video conferencing system but i will add a caveat video conferencing proceeding should be limited only to some cases 
and those cases has to be classified. All cases by video conferencing, I think, may not be uh, an idea which would uh, serve the purpose of administration of justice. Another thing which I will point out, and I second, but uh, uh, Justice Sikri and Justice Prak Tarpati have said, uh, Mr. Prak Tarpati have said, namely the members who are appointed, they must have rudimentary knowledge of company law and insolvency law. They must have large number of high court judges apply. I do not know why they were not taken. Those who have worked on the company side, because every high court has a company jurisdiction, first of all, those who have worked on the company side or in the commercial division, I think there should be preference given by the selection committee to those. It helps in a number of ways. So if you compare the pendency and the disposal, the total pendency today, I think, is nearing about 1,000. All company cases and IBC cases. One third, two third. Two third is IBC. 14,000 plus IBC cases and 7,000. If you look at the disposal by the high court judges, on an average, a high court judge in a year disposes of 2,000 cases. And a specialized tribunal like NCLT is expected to dispose of at least uh, 150 cases per month. That is 1,800 cases. Yes. In uh, a letter which I addressed, in two, three letters which I addressed to all the members during my tenure, I quoted this to say that once these look at the figures of the, uh, the high court disposal and we see the figures which we, we uh, produce, uh, there is an amazing difference. We are a specialized tribunal. We have knowledge all lot on our tips, all statutory provision, amendments, judgment of the Supreme Court, appellate courts, all, all our tips. And there are very limited area on which the litigation come before the uh, NCLT. So why we should not be acting more efficiently rather than, you know, the reasons are obvious why the type of disposal which the High Court gives uh, I mean, a high court judge handles uh, many types of subjects, varieties. Here we are a specialized tribunal. So the expectation, valid expectation from the members of the tribunal, maybe that technical member may be given a lesser target, but the judicial member must show the, the, the type of figure which the high court is showing. So the the third thing is the resolution professionals have to be strengthened. This uh, institution of resolution professional has to be strengthened uh, because resolution professional keeps moving application after application. Now the certificate is required to be given by a resolution professional that the uh, that all laws are the time being in force have been complied with by the resolution applicant and the resolution plan approved by COC meets all requirements. Once this certificate comes, then there is very little, even Supreme Court has said, there is very little for the NCLT to prove. If there is any illegality found, then resolution professionals must be held responsible for giving a certificate which he could not have given, could not have given. Second is, at the stage when the resolution professional is to issue certificate, the lawyers may give objection before he gives certificate, but that stage is not there. That will curb the delay before the bench. So the argument which go on in some of the cases for several, several days 
only resolution plan, threadbare resolution plans are being discussed, which is uh, unnecessary. So, with these observations, I think uh, we can go further. Thank, thank you for that opening comment. Uh, we are almost out of time on part one. Uh, but we have a time for a closing comment. I think, uh, can Mr. Mahesh Ragarwal come in for one closing comment before we end? I think the entire objective of the code was a recovery to the bank, rehabilitation to the companies, and getting new investment. One thing missing, I feel, is that we have many clients coming to us and saying, please tell us if there are any companies in IBC, how do we invest? There is lack of information. There is huge lack of information of companies going into IBC. Currently, what is happening, it is published in the local newspapers where the company is situated and the IBBA website. Possibly, I think a right course would be to involve industry associations like Asocham, FIKI, who can publicize availability of companies which are going into IBC so that you have more investments coming in, more information, and that will reduce the haircuts also. Okay. The lack of information which is causing this problem. We, can, we, we should have taken this up at a larger level in terms of you, uh, the industry body is joining hands to take this up so that uh, good suitors can be found. But uh, we, 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 we uh, being this with the close, uh, part one comes to a close. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Justice Arjun Kumar Sikri, uh, Justice M.M. Kumar, uh, Senior Advocate Parat Tripathi and Mahesh Agarwal, Managing Partner of Agarwal Law Associates for joining us. Thank you viewers for joining in. We'll see you back in part two. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.